hello everyone welcome today we are going to discuss a new paper called speech emotion recognition with multitask learning this paper was presented at interspeech 2021 a couple of days ago and the paper is coming from bio research these are the authors the overview is as follows first we'll look at the introduction of the paper then we'll see the methodology then we'll see experiments and finally we'll see some results so the idea of this paper is very simple so so the paper proposes a multitask learning framework on top of pre-trained wave to work architecture and uh, as you guys know speech emotion recognition is nothing but classifying a given audio signal into uh, emotion a particular emotion class right and in case of imocap they have uh, four emotion classes as a matter of fact they have more than four classes but usually for research paper uh, people use these four uh, emotion classes happy angry sad and neutral and there are many algorithms have been proposed uh, previously using deep learning architecture starting from cnn to rnn to transformers potentials and so on and this paper um, proposes using large self supervised pre-trained models such as wave to vec and uh, combining that with multitask learning framework we'll see when i say multitasking means, uh, means you should ask okay uh, it should have multiple more than one task right so one is obviously emotion recognition and there should be another task we'll see what that is and that is multitask learning framework and the base feature extractor itself or the base model itself is the the wave to work architecture i mean this is nothing new i mean using wave to work architecture for emotion recognition is a uh, is already one year old thing i mean many people there are many i think more than two three papers uh, out there which uh, where, uh, where uh, people have already tried using wave to wave pre-trained models for emotion recognition task as a matter of fact i have one of my i have uh, a paper uh, which is uh, which is the, exactly the same thing but in in my case i'm using multimodal emotion recognition where i use wave to wave for um, wave to wave for uh, audio and bert for text and i'm doing multimodal emotion recognition uh, multimodal emotion recognition task so uh, so that way uh, uh, using pre-trained wave to wave models for emotion recognition is nothing new, but this uh, multitask learning is what is actually making or what is actually doing the uh, doing the magic. Right? This is actually, uh, I mean, the results after using multitask learning uh, is crazy. I mean, you won't believe me if I, I, I I'm I am telling you that by using this multitask learning um, head along with emotion recognition head you are straight away getting more than seven percent improvement absolute seven percent improvement in accuracy which is crazy i mean i don't think so there is any neural, neural network ar architecture which shows uh, going from one previous network to the new network you are getting like seven percent improvement in accuracy i don't think so there is at least for emotion recognition i don't think so there is any but this is really really good i mean very impressive i mean if 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 there is a model which is kind of learning a shared representations using two or auxiliary tasks and if it is achieving such a great performance it's really really good right and uh, they have done some ablation studies as well like looking at uh, uh, the ablation studies basically show how much of the multitask learning or how much of the, the auxiliary loss is kind of contributing into um, into getting a better performance for the main task right the main task here is the emotion recognition task and uh, all the results uh, results are reported on uh, imocap and uh, we'll see we'll see um, how uh, how the model architecture is and what experiments they have done and what are the ablation studies and so on now let's just uh, jump right into the uh, model architecture understand uh, uh, what is the exact uh, model architecture here it is so uh, you have two uh, different loss functions so basically assume you have two different heads uh, one is uh, one network uh, optimizes for transcription which is basically a speech recognition task and another one is optimizing for emotion recognition task which is the main task and look at this as the auxiliary task right and uh, given an input um, or and before that uh, the backbone of the model is the pre-trained wave to wave model which is uh, taken straight away from hugging face library i mean uh, fair sick library i would say so but the, the framework they are using is hugging face the code is open source anyway so you can uh, check out the code i mean uh, if you want to play with it and uh, so the pre-trained wave to wave model uh, takes raw audio wave from his input and then extracts high level feature representations which is the contextual representations from the context network and uh, you can use that directly uh, to optimize 
uh, for uh, CTC loss, which is basically the speech recognition uh, task, right? Uh, which is shown here. So we have uh, CTC loss here, and Y is basically the the uh, outputs from the CTC layer. And L is the number of frames, and V is the vocabulary. In our case, vocabulary is 32 characters. Okay? And uh, that is one task, and uh, that is auxiliary task. And the main task, which is the speech recognition, speech emotion recognition task. Which is or uh, which uses cross entropy loss, right? Between the uh, between the ground truth labels and the predicted labels, and uh, before uh, predicting, you have to pull all the feature uh, frames, or, or uh, you have to pull the pull the uh, sequence of features into a single feature vector using mean pooling or average pooling, whatever pooling you like, right? So once you pull it, you feed it to some uh, um, uh, FC uh, fully connected layer, which will do which will uh, which will map this high dimension feature vector into uh, probability distribution over the class labels right and um, now we have two different losses so uh, you can just add these two losses together and optimize uh, the whole network end to end right uh, along with the pre-trained network right so you can uh, you can update this pre-trained models as well it's not like you are just using this um, pre-trained model for feature extraction or anything you could do that i mean uh, but the results will obviously be lower than fine tuning uh, because i have done these kind of experiments in my paper right so but in this paper they don't uh, show any results or uh, results uh, for the experiments like what happens when we freeze the whole pre-trained network such as this web to web and only tune or only extract the features and use those features only for the classification so that that kind of numbers are not shown here but but um that that would be a good experiment i would i guess right so but anyway uh, that is the training part you add the losses and then train the model but during inference in, inferencing stage you don't want the transcription network you just want the emotion network right so you just just uh, strip off this network and then use this blue path and then you will get the emotion recognition model right so it looks like this here and uh, and uh, so that is the training phase and that is the inferring phase uh, now let's uh, look at the experimentations they have done so uh, so the other experiments are conducted on imocap data set it is a 12 hours um, uh, i mean it has 12 hours of audio data and there are 10 speakers and uh, it has five sessions uh, each session will have two speakers right and uh, there are totally five five thousand about five thousand uh, five hundred utterances and um, Usually, I mean, uh, some paper reports results uh, using five-fold class validation, and some papers do uh, do it using ten-fold class validation. We'll see how that is done in the coming slide. But uh, before that, let's see the uh, let's see the uh, the uh, hyperparameters. So sampling frequency is obviously sixteen kilohertz. Training number of training epochs are hundred. Then you have uh, optimizer, which is the atom optimizer with these uh, these two parameters. Alpha is varied from zero to one but this number is actually giving you the best performance and learning rates are like this and warm-up ratio batch size now let's look at the results so there are many uh, papers uh, many models have been proposed for uh, speech emotion recognition task over the years and on the same data set these are the papers which we have proposed uh, different architectures such as capsule net resnet pre-trained asr um, dual sequence lstm which is the last uh, last year's paper and uh, ResNet plus uh, ResNet with X vector model and 3D convolution ASR and ENS, right? So there are many papers as you can see in last last year only there are six papers. So uh, now, uh, as I said, uh, on IMOCAP, few papers uh, 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 propose their results using 10 fold class validation, and few papers propose 5 fold class validation. I always do uh, 10 uh, 5 fold class validation. So the idea is very like uh, idea is like this. So the IMOCAP dataset has five sessions, right? In each session, there will be conversation between two speakers. Now, if you keep one session as held out data for validation and we use the remaining four sessions for training, that is five-fold class, five class validation. So what you do is for every session, you get the validation accuracy, right? And you average all the five accuracies, then uh, whatever you get is the is the final accuracy right and for 10 fold class validation as i said there are 10 speakers 
like I said, for each session they have two speaker, right? You keep nine sessions, uh, nine uh, speakers during training, for training and one for validation, and you do it for all the ten speakers and average results for all the ten speakers, right? And that number is the uh, tenfold cross validation number, and um, and uh, there are two different accuracy measures people uh, uh, people report. Uh, one is called weighted accuracy. Uh, and another one is called unweighted accuracy. So the unweighted accuracy is basically the class-based one, and weighted accuracy is uh, just normal accuracy, right? So normal accuracy is just find results accuracy for each sentence and then average all of them. So simple. So uh, as you can see, uh, this paper is getting seventy-eight percent, which is crazy, right? Huge improvement, and um, and it's the best performance as of to, I mean best uh, accuracy so far uh, state of the art performance right and uh, they have also done some ablation studies here mm, and if you set alpha to zero which means you are not using uh, multitask learning at all I mean you are not using the, the speech recognition auxiliary uh, task at all uh, you are getting like 71 percent accuracy which is really really good um, in fact last year I had a paper which reported this this almost this accuracy by using both modalities, both audio and text, but uh, I was reporting unweighted, but this paper is reporting weighted accuracy. So there are some changes anyway. And uh, going higher, if you keep increasing your alpha, as you can see, your performance improves. And when you reach alpha equal to 0 0.1, you are getting the best performance, as you can see. Really good results. I mean, uh, I think I think this is like, uh, as I said, this is the state of the art accuracy, or state of the art performance, obviously. And uh, the great thing about this paper is using a single, using just an auxiliary uh, loss uh, for your main uh, or uh, during uh, during training uh, uh, main model. Uh, auxiliary loss is obviously in this case speech recognition. There are papers which have proposed different auxiliary losses such as uh, predicting gender information and so on, but or speaker information and so on. But this is really really good. I mean the, the results are really great. I would say so and. Obviously, the code is out there. Uh, they have open sourced the code. I think whoever is interested in uh, emotion recognition should definitely try that code um, and uh, try to reproduce the results. Right. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this is uh, this is the last slide. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. And if you want to see this kind of content, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.